Please give a warm Singapore welcome. Put your hands together, please, for Mr. Tio Ser Luck, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Happy to be here. I've got 10 pages of speeches here, but I think it started so well with music and uh, rock music and also a great MC. They got the energy going. I don't want to dampen the spirit. So uh, I try not to read from my script but I want to get a message across as well. Maybe first let me start off. Um, I, I'm the minister responsible for entrepreneurship, and uh, so most people think politicians, what do you know? But the question is, yeah, I, maybe I don't know enough, but I try to know. But a little bit of my experience first, I was in business sector for 15 years, had my own startups and all, most built, a few succeeded, recovered back, make a lot more money. Then one day, in Singapore, politics is different. The politics look for the people. The people don't look to be a politician. So we get picked and, um, and decided that, well, you can make, of, uh, make a difference for a greater good. You try. So that's how I get into politics for about eight years. Spent 15 years in corporate, 15 years in business, and now eight years in, in politics. And I have my dream job right now which is to build an entrepreneurship landscape for Singapore and for startups in Singapore. And what you see in this picture is a little vision. It's just nearby. We have this vision of creating our own Singapore Silicon Valley, but I'll call it Singapore Valley then, our startup cluster. It started with Block 71, where all our startups are, and maybe some of you are already in 71. And we want to expand it to two more blocks and probably more for future expansion. What would this place become? It will really become a regional, what well, we hope to build it, a regional entrepreneurship hub, our own Singapore Valley, to have all the activities of startups, venture capitalists, investors. It's an area where everybody will congregate and things will happen there. And we'll have brilliant ideas there, we developed it, and that's where all the networking can be done. You will see when this thing builds up and you spend a lot of time, we'll always spend a lot of time over there. And this is the infrastructure we hope to build, but of course along with the policies that we want to enable all the startups to find that Singapore is such an attractive place to be in and to build up their businesses. So for the last 10 years, well, in fact, it's more than 10 years. For the last 12 years, Singapore, as a government and policymakers, decided to embark on a journey to actually build up the entrepreneurship landscape. So some uh, 2004, 2003, 2004, they decided that we'll set up an entrepreneurship committee. This entrepreneurship committee was called ACE, Action Community for Entrepreneurship. So, they had someone like me, a Minister of State, who chaired a committee. And uh, inside there, it comprises of government officials, also private sector people. What he tried to do was, was to actually look at policies and measures to encourage business to be started. And I think at that time, Block 71, it wasn't, say, really marked out as an entrepreneur startup, entrepreneurship sort of a building and getting all the startups, but they had a lot more startups there. So they were trying to build it, build the content, build the culture into the society, into the Singapore community. So go into the schools and all that. It's been a 10 years journey, and I would say that that committee has achieved a lot. In the 10 years, there's a lot more interest for entrepreneurship in Singapore. So one of the survey, Global Entrepreneurship Monitor, he found that 21% of respondents that they did the survey from Singapore had the intention to start a business within three years. It's, only a, it's a number that is second only to Taiwan. And the number of active startups have also grown by 58% from 24,000 in 2005 to 39,000 in 2013. That's an increase in entrepreneurial activities. So we believe that it is an important pillar of our economy. There must be renewal of the business sector. There must be a refresh start for the business sector, especially SME sector and Singapore businesses. 
So 10 years on, A has been uh, 10 years old, coming 11 years old, I think, by now. We have to take a new fresh start to look at entrepreneurship. It's, the landscape is so much different now with technology, social media, and uh, business startups is a lot, there's a lot more variety and diversity and depth in some of the specialization and some of the businesses that started. Economy has changed. In fact, the economy has changed into, well, it was pure brick and mortar in the past towards more technologically driven and based towards now a larger, what we call a sharing economy where I think businesses that deals with sharing using technology makes a lot of difference. Some of the brick and mortar business is back as well. So I've read that, in fact, I've had some experience as well. Using technology, you can revive an old business. So if you have read the recent article in New York Times, bot games, very traditional bot games, can be revived through crowd sourcing, crowd funding, and through technology, they can grow. Another good example, I will say that my own personal experience was, I'm, I'm quite into sports. I'm quite into working out, right? So I, I've been studying, I've been working out um, with this exercise called CrossFit. Any, any one of you know CrossFit? Yeah? You work out in CrossFit, you have box. You work out in a box. Yeah, okay. So the business model of CrossFit, to me, is unique. CrossFit has been around in the 90s, right? Early 90s. But it has really only grown in the 2000s, right? If you think about it, how did it grow in the 2000s? I think without YouTube, without technology, without websites, could it have grown? And it was, the business model is about the community. I think that's one of the best examples about what brick and mortar business could use technology to build itself up. It, to me, it's a revival. It's a concept, it's a good packaging, it's good marketing, but very clever, innovative way of building the business up. It's easy to start a box. If you call it a box, it's, it's a gym, right? It's simple equipment, weights, rings, chin-up bars, simple. But the business grew. More than 10,000 boxes of affiliates out there. Fantastic business model using technology as a base. They have a games, like Olympic Games have a games where everybody channel their attention to. They build a few models, or say the CrossFit models, people who look good, train well, and those are, those are models. And to me, they have all the ingredients for success. Technology has made it possible because the viral reeling and the promotion is widespread and accessibility is widespread. So what we hope is that these are, to us, brilliant ideas some old ideas or some brick and mortar business can also build itself up. Because of the changing landscape that's so rapid and fast, we also have to change. Policy makers will have to change. We have to, we have to do it differently. So the committee I used to chair, the entrepreneurship committee I used to chair, or I took over for about two years, and it's been there for 10 years building Singapore's entrepreneurship landscape. I've now decided to revamp it. The way I revamped it, is to spin off this committee into the private sector and allow things to happen, allow things to be shared more openly. So this committee will no longer be with the government, it will be with the private sector and let the private sector lead this movement where we take a back seat, fund it, enhance it and support it. So we intend to have ACE, that committee, to be incorporated. Incorporating it, becoming an entity, and be private sector led. It's a major move. Not many has done it before. Taking a government outfit or committee or group, spin it off, privatize it, incorporate it. But I believe that's one of the ways if we want Singapore and create our own Silicon Valley, create our own entrepreneurship landscape, for that to happen, you need the hardware, you also need the software. We have many successes. We have to position Singapore carefully as well, and I think Singapore is a great springboard and stepping board towards the world, towards ASEAN, towards the region. That's how we position. The market may not necessarily be in Singapore, but the fact is that we are linked to the world, we're part of the world, a very relevant role that we play. And that's what we hope this, to attract the startups, that's what we hope to attract brilliant entrepreneurs to study Singapore as well both 
foreign startups as well as local startups to encourage them to do so. And for all startups to have a great environment, you don't just need soft hardware, as I mentioned, you need to build up software. They also need to have the support system. The support system will come in terms of investors, so we hope to attract venture capitalists, international investing investors to come to Singapore and say that we have all the brilliant ideas that are coming in. Government funds, research and development, technology, good startups, entities that can make a difference and actually change makers in the future. So we have those funds to be able to make that happen. But they also need to have a network of support where mentorship is concerned, people who are experienced are willing to give back and also to be able to say, I pick up the phone, I call, there's access to a whole support system. We hope to be able to build up that system as well. And we've been talking to many different partners. So I'm glad today I have a chance to actually share that we managed to convince Bain Consultancy to be part of this whole exciting entrepreneurship landscape. So between the Singapore government and Bain, the Bain alumni, all the consultants who are used to work in Bain, have decided to come together and support this effort. So we're going to set up, I'm glad to launch, the Bain Alumni ACE Mentorship Program. Bain Alumni ACE Mentorship Program will go a long way because they are doing it on a pro bono basis. I have to commend them for their effort. I think consultants are not cheap, right? Well, they are all ex-consultants right now, so they have a lot more commercial experience. I think their experience and their wisdom that they share with the startups will go a long way for all these entrepreneurs. So we're going to support this system and through, uh, support this program, and through this program, we hope that they get all the management advice from these consultants, from these ex-consultants and these mentors, and the connections to help the startups internationalize and strategize and also build their companies. And we hope that this will be a catalyst to actually bring more experienced entrepreneurs and industry experts to offer their time and advice for our startups. So Singapore's entrepreneurship scene, we have come a long way. We want to make progress and continue to make progress and really make a difference uh, towards the community here. But most importantly is that we hope to inspire many, many other young people and also even anyone who aspire to be entrepreneurs but never have a chance to actually start their business in Singapore. Inspire them, help them to understand. Hopefully, it can change the generation, change the society in Singapore as well to accept failure as part of, as a path towards success. It's never easy in a, in a country like Singapore, in a city like Singapore, because we have unemployment rate that's hovering around 2% or below, and the economy is growing, we've got more and more jobs created, there are more jobs waiting for people, so it's never easy. But we believe Singapore has a Singaporean spirit to actually venture out on their own and chart their own future and own their future. So for that, Hope that we can all play our part, and I wish Startup Asia successes and uh, events like that should be encouraged. And uh, we want to give you all the full support. Thank you.